um, my name is Tia and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the San Francisco Dharma Collective. We've been in operation since the end of 2018. Some students from an organization that closed uh, spent a little bit of time trying to determine whether they also needed to disband and find other Sangha or whether we could continue on together. The students approached the landlord basically and said, can we just take over the lease? And the landlord said yes. And then we approached the teachers who were teaching there and asked each of them, okay, would you keep teaching if we created this new organization? And most of them said yes. We spent a while, a couple of months, meeting and trying to figure out how to continue offerings. That was the basic focus of all of those initial meetings. At first, the board was, there were about 15 people on the board and these very chaotic meetings. And then slowly we developed kind of processes and norms. And then there were, you know, lots of interpersonal things and disagreements, and but we kept it going throughout. And, um, and then the pandemic hit. We went entirely virtual during the pandemic, and then we moved into this space, 2929 24th Street, just about a year ago. Almost all of the work here at the Dharma Center has been done by volunteers. We began, I think, early 2022 to do painting, you know, figure out how we were going to utilize the space, and beautified it, got a fresh coat of paint, replacing the sink, um, you know, putting up a wall. All of those things have been done by Sangha members. And thankfully, one of our teachers, Tig O'Malley, was kind enough to offer his design wisdom uh, to help us just kind of connect the space with itself. So this is the part of the center that we sit in and where we uh, participate with our hybrid Zoom interactions. We put a call out for donations within the community and, and, and the Sangha. Someone donated a, a cabinet for the kitchen, but we were able to repurpose it for the camera and the television screen for the, for the Zoom. And we've continued from our old space, our lending library, and now it has its own reading room, which is exciting. And we have a modest collection of books that people can borrow. We've got many great books. People have been really generous to just drop off books that they have enjoyed, and they, they're all over the place. 60s, you know, hippie-informed Buddhism books and, and books about well-being to, you know, whoever, Thich Nhat Hanh or, or about Tibetan Buddhism and, and different practices. We had some mantra of mine of like to tell folks, go into the library, pick out a book and take it home. We have too many and we, 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 we want people to get the benefit of these books. We also have a cantina, which is kind of a little eating area and then a kitchen area as well as a backyard. Somebody's donated their time to help us do plants and, and just make it a more welcoming space. The building already had this wonderful mural on the front with, with these fish and... And then there's a giant net. But if you back up and really look at what's happening in the whole mural, the fish are being liberated from the net. And when I realized that, I thought, how did we end up in this place with this mural already drawn that is expressing the joy of liberation? We just lucked into a fantastic space. Our old space, even though it was very close, was off the beaten path. We had some foot traffic, but not much. And now here we are on 24th Street. Really like at the epicenter of the, you know, it's even officially now a Latino cultural district. The Mission District is prescribed by 16th Street to 24th Street and Mission Street to Petraro Avenue. And that brown building, not that it matters, but that's where we are, that church there. If we could see through that building, we would be looking at our roof. 
I've been living in the mission since 1995. I really enjoy the variety, the vibrancy. I was very excited when I moved here that there were restaurants open very late and that there are people around all the time. There's panderias from all over uh, Central and South America, so you can find uh, community and culture from all over, which makes it really important for us as a center to really practice offering for the people who are in our local community in terms of who's right outside our door and also our local community in terms of who's in San Francisco in general. So it's been exciting to work on that. There is so much foot traffic in front of our space that when new people come to our space, we almost always ask them, how'd you find out about us? And now, probably seven times out of 10, the answer is I was walking by and I saw that, wow, there's a meditation center here, you know? So it's really changed how we uh, interact with the community. Our community tends to be drawn to the aspects of the Dharma that are more secular, that are less rooted in religious practice and more in the Dharma and how it is useful in navigating the world <laughs> that we all live in. And while some teachers teach sutras and present the wisdom of the Buddha based in sutra, others are closer to relational emotional well-being, uh, emotional balance, both from the tantric tradition with practices like Chandra Easton, Feeding Your Demons. We've also got Eve Ackman, who is coming from a more psychological perspective while also rooted in deep dharma. And so we just benefit from a variety of teachers. We've been thinking a lot about how to describe the the continuity, like what is our through line. And while the collective hasn't necessarily come to a decision, one of the things that I see in our through line is a way to use the Dharma in your life. So there's a, a rich uh, experiential learning in, in learning about the Dharma on the cushion. And there's an amazing return of practice in uh, working those those same teachings and those same lessons out in the world in in your relationships in your work environment in your in your family life